Welcome back to OWF11. Uh, you are on Intellian TV. Uh, here with us is Craig uh, Kitterman, uh, Senior uh, Technical Ambassador of Microsoft. Hello, Craig. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Microsoft and open source. Uh, could you uh, just tell us a bit more about Microsoft's involvement in the open source world? How, what's going on? Sure, absolutely. So. So Microsoft has really changed over the last several years and become more open. Um, and I think, you know, we're, we really have taken a step back and looked at our customers and the ecosystem. And what we see is a very complicated, mixed, heterogeneous set of technologies that are that are out there. Um, and and when, as a result of that, what we've done is we've said, we said how can we, um, as a participant in this ecosystem, really do do better by our customers? Um, by being more open and more interoperable. So there's been a tremendous amount of activities in the last, uh, let's say, five, six years, really focused on the notion of being more open and interoperable and, and being a, an active participant in that ecosystem so that our customers can deploy our technologies in this mixed heterogeneous environment and get all the benefit of having all these things working well together. So, I mean, you're, you're, uh, it seems like open source has been a, a great success for Microsoft. Could you, could you share a bit more on, on some more specific uh, successes of yours sure. so, so far? So, what we've done, particularly in the last few years, is spent a lot of time looking at technical problems. So, we've talked to uh, customers around the world. We have a, a big customer council that comes and meets in Redmond every six months. And they tell us, here are the practical issues that we have with interoperability between open source technologies and Microsoft technology. Here's the things we want you guys to work on. So, what we've done is we've spent the uh, last several years and um, a lot of time and resources to actually go and create code that, that really makes, it stitches together the Microsoft technology and the non-Microsoft technology. Um, some examples of that can be found on interopbridges.com is, is one website where we, we showcase some of that work. And one example of that is really some of the work we've done, um, particularly in our cloud offering. So um, our cloud offering is called Windows Azure. It was built from the ground up to be an open and interoperable platform. Um, and so you can see that the new things that are coming from Microsoft are really designed with that in mind. So Windows Azure is built that way. Um, and one of the key tenets of that is developer choice. So we've built open source projects that are SDKs for Java, for PHP, um, developers to actually come and take their applications and deploy those on Windows Azure, as well as take advantage of all the other uh, Windows Azure services that are all um, exposed via standard, uh, standards-based interfaces. So open source is really uh, now has a practical way to be deployed on Microsoft technology and on the Microsoft cloud with some of the code and work that we've been doing. So, uh, open, so you're, you're, uh, you're inferring that uh, open source for you is mostly now about cloud offerings or it's Windows Azure is just one of No, one it's just example one example of because it's sort of the, um, you know, sort of where things are going and where we're spending a lot of time focusing on. But really, open source has, in the last few years, really become part of the core DNA of the company from the top down. And all of the businesses around Microsoft are doing strategic planning around trying to understand how can our businesses work better and be more integrated with open source technologies that are in the market. So this isn't just a cloud thing. This is absolutely part of the company DNA. Okay, so you, you, you are really restructuring from the ground up. And so absolutely. I guess... Uh, considering that uh, Microsoft has been a traditional business oriented more and not uh, having open source in its DNA. I guess you guys have gone through a lot of challenges actually to make the transition. So what, what has been? Um, well, I think it, it's simple. It's really helping everyone in the business understand that uh, we're in the business of serving our customers and it's in our best interest to do what our customers ask us to do. And if our customers want to run uh, a Windows stack next to a, a Linux stack or other um, competitive technology, whether it's commercial or non-commercial open source. It doesn't matter. It's in our best interest to make sure that our technology uh, will work for them in the environment that they choose. So it's really about helping everyone inside the company, top to bottom, understand that you know our customers are the ones who's, who's pay, who pay us, and uh, we want to make them happy, and, and we have to do what it takes to be an active participant in a, in a very complex, heterogeneous world in order to keep those customers happy. And open source is doing a great job for you guys, right? Absolutely. I mean, um, open source on Windows is, uh, is a real practical solution for many customers. And, you know, we, 
there was a study, I think it was done by SourceForge, something like 80% of the open source projects out there actually run today on Windows, and a lot of people don't realize that. So there, are, there actually is a nice synergy there already for customers who want to run Windows, who want to run open source, and we're simply looking at how can we make that even tighter and, and work more, more efficiently and effectively together moving forward. Great. Well, thank you very much for, you. Uh, for the interview. Thank you all. Uh, see you soon on Intelli TV. Thank you.